around the world. Since the Hebrew is perfect, of course, she's a very good candidate to be a guest on the show. And when you will improve your Hebrew, you'll be guest as well. Welcome to Israel. Hello, my name is Daniela Trone. I do uh, Israeli advocacy. I was the head of the Bring Back Our Boys campaign and I was the assistant to the military at the Shane Ground. My name is Daniel Siemens. My name is Daniel Seaman. I today am the bureau chief of a new Israeli talk radio station in English called The Voice of Israel. Uh, thank you for interviewed. I was on vacation, so I didn't get to, to interview you, but I made sure they would. I'm a 30 year veteran of the Israeli government, former spokesman, the director of the government press office. Uh, the only advice I have for you is uh, since you got engaged in Jerusalem, we can't do wrong. Um, from the politicians I met over the years, if they have a strong woman behind them, there's no stopping them. I've seen that already. So I think you're on a you're on the right track. Now I can register in your area. My only question is it's gonna determine my vote. Yankees or Mets? <laughs> oh, you lost my vote. <laughs> the fact that you were honest, you got my vote. A little bit. Every group of that screws out the house and on this, everyone gets up and says, Hi, I'm Jack, and then it was, Hi, Jack, and it's containing some bad drinks. So I'm going to say, um, Hi, I'm Jack. Hi, Jack. And it has been, and it has been more than 20 years. <laughs> I'm Jack, and it has been more than 20 years since I have had outspoken uh, support of Israel as a congressman. Um, Colonel Ettinger is is extremely on the mark. To be pro-Israel representing the five towns is a given. Uh, I have no doubt that if, if would it be that Bruce's opponent would win in another universe, she would vote solidly for Israel. What she wouldn't do is take on this administration. She wouldn't take on President Obama. The, the, what, what Bruce has in his only point of state in his kishkas for Israel. I remember when he first decided to run, and he wrote, I, you know, I suggested him to write a petition made by Israel, and he emailed it to me. And I called him up right away and said, who did you hire to write this? It's incredible. He had written it himself. Uh, Bruce is not just going to be a, a vote for Israel. He's going to be a boy for Israel. He's going to be somebody who will take on those in Washington who seek to say they're pro Israel, then do things to erode the relationship. It's, uh, he's picked up so much of the sudden nuances of U.S. Israel relationship. And he speaks up on how a lot of people, especially in Washington today, say things that make them look, sound, and smell pro Israel. And uh, while your prime minister wonderfully, when speaking to Apex a few years ago, says it looks like it, but smells like it, but looks like it, but it must be it, but it looks like it's pro Israel, it sounds like it's pro Israel, and it talks like it's pro Israel, it's not necessarily pro Israel. Uh, that's why, uh, even though uh, I felt it very important, to help Bruce, besides being a long time friend, uh, because he has such a viable candidacy, because I know he will do so much for our people and our nation, not just with a vote, but with a voice, with a soapbox, with a pen. Uh, I feel it's very important to come here to show, as Bruce came to Israel to show his support for what you are going through, I want him to be here with him to show my support for him. My name is David Zeit, I'm the Executive Director of United with Israel. We are the uh, largest pro-Israel advocacy website in the world with over 2.5 million followers in only two and a half years. First of all, welcome to Israel. Congratulations to both of you on your recent engagement. I just found out that Sigal and I are uh, alumni of the same high school, Yeshiva Flatbush. That's right, that's right. I didn't say that, you said that. <laughs> I certainly look older. But it is a real pleasure to have you here. I know that our organization can help you in ways uh, to reach your uh, career goals, uh, your political goals, and we'll be more than happy to help you along the way with that. We are a very powerful voice. 2.5 million followers can't be wrong. 
and it keeps growing, especially in the last three months, we've grown by over 300,000. Uh, during this operation, we have not only utilized that leverage to benefit so much of Israel, we have created ways. We have been able to garner support financially and provide for organizations, individual families, the IDF, in the realm of over $200,000 in just a, a short period of time, just a month of work. And we utilize this leverage to help promote Israel all over the world. Our plan for expansion is to have United with Israel as a universal household name in every country. And we will do that. We will accomplish that because our goals are very, very clear. And those goals are not only to have the entire world see the truth, read the truth and know the truth about Israel and the Jewish people, most of which is completely obscured and completely blurred by the anti-Israel sentiment and the anti-Semitism that is going around in the world. And I use that term very, very carefully because I truly believe, and I think everybody else is beginning to believe, that to be anti-Israel and to be anti-Semitic are, are no longer two different things. They are the same thing. To be anti-Israel is to be anti-Semitic. This is the only Jewish homeland, the one true Jewish homeland, and even here, we are not welcome <laughs> to the rest of the world. Um, it is important that they read the truth. In our work, we find that there are, people are divided into three different groups. There is a very small percentage on one side that makes a lot of noise, that knows only certain facts. There is a small percentage on the other side that knows a lot of facts that doesn't make as much noise. And then there's a very large group in the middle that doesn't know anything. And they give the attention to the squeaky wheel. They absorb whatever information they get, and it's inaccurate, and it's hateful, and it's our job and our mission to make the world understand what the truth is about us. And we will accomplish that goal, and as long as we have our voice, and our voice continues to grow, and as long as we have voices such as yours, that will unequivocally speak on behalf of Israel and the Jewish state and the Jewish people, we know that we will be able to accomplish our goal. And we'll win our war, the war of words, um, in the battlefield of the media. Thank you. Sure. First of all, uh, my dear friend Joe, thank you so much for arranging this beautiful dinner. And uh, I want to thank the members of parliament um, who came this evening to show solidarity uh, with all of us. Uh, I'm very honored. And I want to thank my friend, Jack Rock. He's a real friend. He dropped everything he was doing. He walked away from his business. And he came to Israel to be with me. That is a true friend, Jack Rock. I want to thank all of you for coming this evening. Deputy Mayor, thank you for your kind uh, gift that I will proudly wear. Uh, I don't know if you know this, the county that I will be representing in New York, their symbol is a lion. So we are lions together. So let me address um, some of the things that were said tonight. Uh, so you know where I stand and you know what my thoughts are uh, with respect to current events in America and in Israel and around the world. When my grandfather took me on his knee two weeks before he died, I was nine years old. And my grandfather was a typical grandfather he would give me candy, he would take me to amusement parks, he would show me a good time. We never had what is called a serious conversation until two weeks before he died. He asked me to come into the kitchen, he was visiting my home, and again, I'm only nine years old, and he sits me on his lap, and he looks me in the eye, and he says, I want to have a serious conversation with you. And I'm like, okay, Grandpa. He said, I want you to never forget two things. 
Never forget you're an American, and never forget you're a Jew. So what I'm doing, what I'm doing in this campaign is fulfilling my promise to my grandfather. When we talk about the war against Hamas, Hezbollah, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Muslim Brotherhood, you go down the list, as you correctly stated, this is a war against Western civilization. It is a war against Europe. It is a war against America. It is not just a war against Israel. Israel is the first line of defense. If that domino falls, Europe will fall. And then once Europe goes, who will stand with America? So I understand the importance this is my third trip to Israel. I was here one month before 9-11. I lost my nephew on 9-11. He was one of the first responders. So my family has been personally hit by the terrorism of Al-Qaeda. My sister's oldest boy died trying to help people, rescuing them from Tower 2. So, these are the reasons why I'm so passionate. I came here two years ago, I came back to Israel two years ago because of Segal. We had started dating, we were dating for about six months, and um, I said, Segal, your birthday is August 26th, it's coming up. What would you like for your birthday? And she said, what I would really like is to see my mother in Israel. So that was my birthday gift to her two years ago. And when I came to Israel for the second time, I saw so many more things than I had seen before. And I learned so much more. And it made me even more passionate. And that's when I fell in love with Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the most spiritual, wonderful city in the world. It truly is. So I began a love affair with Sagal and with, and with Jerusalem. And then when we got to the point where it was serious in the relationship, and I knew that this was the person for me, the love of my life, who shared my passion, I decided that I wanted to get engaged in Jerusalem. So last night, last night I proposed to Seagal in front of her family, 30 family members right here in Jerusalem, and uh, it was a special, special night for us. So um, Seagal, Thank you. So let me, uh, let me just touch on a couple of things, and then we'll have a nice meal, and we can have, go back to having fun. Uh, I am not going to criticize President Obama tonight, because we have a protocol in America that when we leave our country, we do not say anything bad about our president, whether we disagree with him or not. So I'm not gonna say anything bad about President Obama. If you wanna know how I feel about him, you can go to my website or my Facebook page and you'll know exactly where I stand. So let me say I can disagree with the president without criticizing him, and that's what I'm going to do tonight. First of all, uh, Secretary Kerry, in my view, made a mistake, or maybe it wasn't a mistake. In February of this year, he talked about Israel delegitimizing itself. Now, what is that the language of? That's the language of the BBS. And I called him out for that. 
my opponent, who I'm running against, says she loves Israel. Like what? Like you love ice cream? She has said nothing about that. Then in April, Secretary Kerry said that Israel was in danger of becoming an apartheid state. Again, my opponent did not criticize Secretary Kerry. I said he should resign. That that language is anti-Semitic because the BDS is anti-Semitic. You are absolutely right. The BDS is a mass of liberal anti-Semitism. America has two parties, the Democrat and Republican Party. I am very concerned with the Democratic Party. They are moving further and further to the left, which is a pro-Palestinian position. If you read the Pew Research poll that was taken three weeks ago, 53% of Americans sympathize with Israel. That used to be 65, 66, 67%. So this is very troubling to me. Out of those that were surveyed, 44% of the Democrats sympathize with Israel versus 73% of Republicans. The Democratic Party is being hijacked by the pro-Palestinian left. That is the fact. So there is a big difference. You can say, I love Israel, oh, we're gonna make sure Israel's safe and secure. Then there'll be the but, the but will be. But, you know, the Palestinians have their rights and we have to make sure that there's a peace. My position is as follows. Israel should decide Israel's future. No country, including America, should tell Israel how to make peace. That is up to Israel. Not up to America, not up to Europe. It's up to Israel. I support Israel. So if Israel wants to make peace, whatever those terms may be, I support that. If they decide that they need to prosecute a war to get peace, I am for that. Because I have seen things that other politicians in America have not seen. I have seen that when you go to Samaria, that if you go to the, from Tel Aviv to the first border of Samaria, it's only nine miles. I see where Samaria sits vis-a-vis -vis Tel Aviv's airport. Strategically, I know the importance. So I want you to know that in spite of the fact that I have taken criticism already for visiting Samaria, and I'm going to take criticism for being here tonight. I don't care. We have to do what is right. And we have to fight the enemies of Israel because they are the enemies of America. And they're not just killing Jews, they're killing Christians. Now one thing I'd like to set the record straight. Joe, said that I was responsible for Paul McCartney coming here. That's, that's not true. That's not true. I don't want anybody to think that. My ex-wife is Jewish, and we had a discussion about the BDS, and I think that she influenced him to do that. And that was the right choice. That was the right choice. We cannot let Israel be delegitimized by the pro-Palestinian left. We cannot let that happen. The last thing I want to talk about is Iran. When you talk about Iran, you have to understand, as was correctly stated, Iran is a threat 
to America. It is in America's national interest to make sure that Iran does not get nuclear weapons capability. They must not get that capability. We had a deadline of July 20th that came and went where they were supposed to make material acts to slow down their nuclear weapons capability and they didn't do that. The deadline was extended to July 20th, from July 20th to November, without one concession from Iran. Iran would not hesitate to use their nuclear weapons on Israel, but they also would not hesitate to use their nuclear weapons on Europe and America. I don't believe for one minute that Iran would hesitate in giving radioactive material to terrorists to explode a dirty bomb in Times Square. I am absolutely 100% convinced that they would do that. So we must not take the eye off the ball. We must stop Iran. My position is very clear. We need to strengthen the sanctions and set a hard deadline and a short deadline. And if Iran doesn't stop their nuclear weapons program, then America should take military action. Not Israel, America. It is in our national interest. We are the superpower. We are the ones that should act like a superpower. It is a threat to Western civilization to allow Iran to gain nuclear weapons capability. And when I go to Congress, that is the most important thing on my agenda because I know the threat to Israel, but I also know the threat to my own country, to America, and to all of Western civilization. So I know I've gone on quite a bit. I want you to know that I am completely passionate about the fight that you're in, and I join you in that fight because it's right. You mentioned right-wing Jews. I don't refer to us as right-wing Jews. I refer to us as rational Jews. This is rational. <laughs> expecting, expecting to have peace with governments and entities that are sworn to destroy you, as they say about Israel and America, is irrational. We must be strong, we must be strong together, we must be vigilant, and I am not afraid to be that voice in the American Congress. I relish to be that voice because we are at a crossroads and the stakes are very high. So I want to thank you for your hospitality. I want you to know that you will have a fighter in Congress for you and for America because the dangers are that great. And I hope to celebrate next year here in Israel as a United States Congressman and with Mrs. Blake. Thank you.